Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Menace Forum UM790 Pro and this is one that I've been super excited about for a little while. Couldn't wait to get my hands on it because it's actually using the most powerful Ryzen APU on the market right now. The Ryzen 9 7940HS and with this we get 8 Zen 4 cores up to 5.2 gigahertz and RDNA 3 graphics up to 2800 megahertz and yeah there is some overclocking we can do actually on the CPU and GPU side of things but with this unit we're going to be keeping it at the stock clocks and I'll tell you right now this is definitely one of the best performers we've taken a look at so far. Menace Forum has really been at the forefront of many PCs for the last couple years. They do some really innovative stuff especially with the cooling systems and this one's no different. They're using their brand new Cold Wave 2.0 cooling system which utilizes copper heatsink, cooling fan, and liquid metal to keep this APU nice and chilly. And this out of the box runs at 65 watts. I haven't seen it go over 80 degrees at 65 watts and it stays nice and quiet. I thought their last generation, you know, their Cold Wave 1.0 system was really nice for the UM690s, kept it nice, cool, and quiet, but this system definitely does a lot better given that we can run at higher wattages with this APU. With the UM790, they are offering a couple different storage and RAM variants, 32GB of RAM with a 512GB SSD, a 1TB SSD, or you can go up to 64GB of RAM with a 1TB SSD, or if you just wanted to add your own RAM and storage, they're also selling this bare bones over on their website. Inside of the box, obviously, we get the UM790 Mini PC. Really sleek design here, we'll go over everything in just a second. 120 watt power supply and uh, you know we're running at 65 watts but this can get on up there that's just the total TDP on the APU still needs a little extra power for everything else but we're not going to hit 120 with this unit. We also get 6 foot HDMI cable and a VESA mounting bracket. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and two USB 4 ports. This utilizes 40 gig protocol so we can do an eGPU off of this unit if you wanted to. Around the sides, not much going on, but we do have plenty of ventilation. And around back, we have four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two full-size HDMI 2.1 ports, and these will do 4K 144Hz each. USB will do 8K 60 out of the front, so in total we can do four displays on this unit. A 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and of course we've got our power input for that 120 watt power supply that's included. I also wanted to give you a quick look at the internals here. As you can see, this does utilize dual channel RAM. It's DDR5 up to 5600 megahertz. And we've got the new cooling system for the M.2 SSDs and RAM that uh, Menace Forum has been adding to a lot of their mini PCs. We've got two 2280 slots here, PCIe 4.0, so we can add plenty of storage to this unit. It's quite easy to get in here. And when it comes to the specs, like I mentioned, this is using the new AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS Phoenix Point APU. Cores are based on Zen 4, graphics are based on RDNA 3, 8 cores, 16 threads, we've got a base clock of 4 GHz and a boost up to 5.2. Built-in Radeon 780M graphics with 12 CUs up to 2800 MHz. This uses DDR5 at 5600 MHz and you can get this with 32 gigs, but this one has 16. Two M.2 2280 PCIe 4.0 SSDs can be installed in this unit. We've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and this is running Windows 11. And since it's using an x86 CPU, we can always install Linux, so definitely keep an eye out. We're going to be testing SteamOS on this unit for sure. Alright, so here we are. Now, like I mentioned, this is the most powerful Phoenix Point APU that AMD has released so far, the 7940HS, and we have taken a look at it on the channel in a laptop. We haven't seen it in a mini PC until now. This is paired up with the Radeon 780M graphics. 5600 megahertz RAM, which really makes a difference when it comes to this iGPU performance. And for this, we've got two gigs dedicated of VRAM. And I kind of like to leave it at two to three because uh, when it comes down to it, some games won't pre-cache the shaders if we have more. It's a weird scenario that I've run into with games like Hogwarts and things like that. So I kind of keep it on the low end, but remember, it's going to allocate as much as it needs. And with this, we've got 16 gigs all together. And this APU isn't a low power consumption option. I mean, it can definitely pull some wattage. And in this new Menace Forum Mini PC, it's actually set at 65 watts out of the box. So if I just run a quick stress test here, you'll see right over here, it'll jump up to 65 watts. Now that's total package power. So if I go over to uh, my GPU, 
we're going to run a quick stress test on this, you can see that at that 65 watts, at least when we're stressing out the CPU on all eight cores, we can't hit 2800 megahertz. But remember, you know, when we're gaming here, it's not going to run all eight cores at 65 watts. It will go up to 2800 megahertz. So this is the highest clock, 780M on the market right now. And there is overclocking potential, but for this video, we're just going to keep it simple. You can see that just stressing out the GPU pulls close to 30 watts. So at idle, this is around 11, I'd say around 29 watts at 2800 megahertz just on the iGPU. That's why when we see these chips in handhelds at lower wattages, we're not seeing the kind of performance we can out of these mini PCs because with this, we don't really have to worry about cooling because this new cooling system that Minisform has come up with is good up to around 80 watts that I've tested so far. And we definitely don't need to worry about battery because we're plugged in with this unit. Usually with these mini PCs, I do some 4K video playback and things like that, but this is going to handle it no problem at all. We can do four displays out of this 4K 60 and this chip will handle it at 65 watts. Really, what I want to take a look at here is benchmarks and gaming with this unit. So the first thing we're going to take a look at are some benchmarks. And the first one on the list here is Geekbench 6, single core, 2706, multi, 12,415. And this chip does have more to offer. This will do up to 80 watts, and it really does make a difference. Remember, all of these are at 65 watts. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid with a 30,057, Fire Strike 6,945, and finally, Time Spy with a solid 3,240. When it comes to iGPU performance, this is kind of as good as it gets right now. We can overclock the GPU up to 3000 megahertz and up the wattage so we can keep those clocks on the CPU. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments below and we can do a higher wattage test on this mini PC. But now I wanna move into some real world gaming. And first up, we've got Minecraft. Now I completely understand that this isn't gonna impress anybody. This is uh, Minecraft for Windows. We're at 60 FPS. Of course, this is going to run at 60. We could even run this at 120. We're at about 20 chunks right now. Fancy graphics is on. But what I wanted to show you was uh, RTX on with Minecraft. So these new RDNA 3 iGPUs can handle ray tracing, but it's not the best. I still wanted to show this off, and I've done some testing so far on like the ROG Ally and another PC with this similar chip. And uh, I'd say the best performance you can get out of this is locking that GPU to a static clock. Remember, we can go up to 2800 megahertz, so that's what I've got it locked at. But yeah, I mean, this chip can do ray tracing. Next up, we've got God of War, low settings, 900p, FSR is set to performance. So right now I'm not using any kind of Radeon resolution scale, and I would definitely recommend doing that. But we're actually getting really good performance being that we're at 900p because on the older RDNA 2 iGPUs, even at 720, we had a hard time hitting a steady 60 with it with these settings. We had to go to ultra low. So yeah, RDNA 3 has made a bit of a difference and it really comes down to having that faster RAM in this mini PC. Spider-Man Miles Morales or even Spider-Man Remastered is totally playable. And for some reason with this game, you know, I've always run into issues on iGPUs and I mention it all the time. Locking it down at 60 is probably the way to go. With the unlock, we can get an average of around 78 FPS, but we get dips way under 60 in the mid to low 50s. But when it's locked here, V-Sync is on at 60. We're getting a really steady frame rate. Street Fighter 6, medium settings, 900p, and at 1080, it will do low. With fighting games, these little chips work out great. Even the older RDNA 2 chips did. With uh, Injustice 2 or Mortal Kombat 11, 1080, medium settings, 60 all day long with these fighting games. Cyberpunk 2077, low, 900p, FSR is set to performance. We're getting an average of 74 FPS, and we can do 1080, but we do need to up that wattage. Through all of these games, you'll see we're right there at around 59 watts. This does want a little more so we can keep those GPU and CPU clocks up, so that's why I mentioned, you know, taking this up a bit in another video might uh, definitely unlock some performance.
And finally, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and for some reason my game capture only captured at 30 FPS, but we've got the frame rate up in the top left hand corner, I just kind of didn't want to go back through it. Recommended settings, and with recommended I've set it to performance instead of uh, quality, but with this we got an average of 125 FPS and a low of only 83. Another thing I always like to take a look at with these tiny PCs is total system power consumption because this can be very important to some people, especially in other parts of the world other than America, where uh, electricity cost is very, very high. At idle, this pulls 14 watts, average gaming, 76, and the max was 96 watts. And this is total system. I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter from the wall, so this is everything the mini PCs pull in. Not as low as other PCs that we've seen, but we are working with a lot more performance. So far, I've been having a blast with the new UM790 Pro from Minus Forum. This is one of my favorite PCs so far, and there's a lot of tweaking and tuning that we can do with this APU. We can up the wattage, set up our own power profiles, we can set a static clock on the GPU, and I know for sure that we can get much better performance out of this PC by adding our own profiles. And of course, we can install other operating systems like Linux, so that's something I'll definitely be doing. But if you're interested in seeing this running at, let's say, 80 watts, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn a little more about the UM790 Pro, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. Really appreciate you watching. It'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on if you're interested in seeing more out of this PC. And like always... Thanks for watching.